I'm standing here in my garden, which is mostly organically produced. We didn't use any synthetic pesticides or fertilizers. We've been out harvesting yellow beans and green beans today. And because I know how these were produced, I feel pretty comfortable picking one right off the plant. And eating it. I'm going to provide a critique of the documentary Yield, which is about the Indian farmer suicides. Jumping right in. At the 8.50 mark of this video, Vijay Jawanja of the Farmers Union explains the situations of the farmers that he represents. Quote, There are claims that BT cotton has increased the production of cotton in India. I accept that production has increased. But the farmers' profits and prosperity have not. If you want to measure the growth of agriculture, don't judge by how much production has increased. Measure it only by the growth in farmers' income. Today we have subsidies for drip irrigation, chemical fertilizers, plastic pipes, canal irrigation. Take away these subsidies. Will the BT cotton still compete? America has all the technology. America also has BT cotton. America has market efficiency. Their farmers are protected by crop insurance. Yet why have American cotton farmers been given a $4.6 billion subsidy? The simple truth is that their government treasury provides them with an economic cushion. So first off, we have an admission by Vijay that the GM cotton has increased production in India. The problem is not that the technology failed to do what it was designed to do, which is to pr protect the farmer's yield from loss to the boll weevil. Nowhere in this video are we actually told how or why biotechnology has caused farmer suicides. Second, we are told that the Indian farmers have subsidies for irrigation and fertilizers. Of course, it's true that all crops need water and nutrients to grow. BT cotton is no different. The government is apparently helping out covering some of the farmers' costs, and that's probably a good thing, whatever they grow. As near as I can see, the main complaint that Vijay is lodging is that the Indian government isn't providing crop insurance like the U.S. government does. So do you think maybe the Indian government should provide crop insurance? Regardless of what they grow, BT cotton, conventional cotton, or something else altogether, crop insurance is probably a good investment. Farming is risky business anywhere. If you're a subsistence farmer and your crop fails, you might starve. If you're an Indian cotton farmer and your crop fails, you might not be able to pay back the loans you took out. You might not be able to pay off the dowry for your daughters to be married. That dowry is specifically cited as the reason for the first suicide mentioned in this video. Following this segment with Vijay, another farmer discusses how he decided to try growing non-BT cotton using indigenous seeds without any pesticides or fertilizer. He explains that due to the unpredictability of the weather, other farmers are scared into following established practices and don't have the courage to try anything novel. How did they get that BT cotton in the first place if they were too scared to try anything? His indigenous cotton grew faster than the BT cotton of his neighbors. Yay for courage and innovation. How did he get the indigenous cotton seeds if no one has them, as is claimed repeatedly? Why hasn't he spread the seeds around and shared his success story with his neighbors? Maybe he could make a business selling those seeds. Harvesting cotton removes nutrients from the land. If he doesn't put fertilizer on his field before next season, his harvest will probably decline. That will continue as long as he farms the same plot, and he doesn't replenish what he removed. There's nothing unique about BT that requires fertilizer. If you want to harvest crops, you must remove nutrients that were in the soil when you harvest the crop, and those nutrients have to be replenished somehow. This is Farming 101, and in the organic farming course that I took from the Maine Organic Farmers and Gardeners Association last spring, they stressed this point repeatedly. They don't have to be synthetic fertilizer. They can be organic manure compost. After this, we're told about how the young people aren't being educated in India, then about how they don't want to be farmers anymore and are leaving their villages. Then how one son of a farmer who committed suicide also tried to hang himself because he didn't know how to farm, but had an education and couldn't get a job with it. All of this is very inconsistent. Is there no education or no jobs for people with education? Suicide of any kind is tragic. It's made more tragic when people exploit it to push an agenda, as some in the anti-GMO movement have done. There's no doubt harms from globalization and economic injustice at various scales occurring in India that magnify these suicides. But why pin this on biotechnology when it has performed as expected? The International Food Policy Research Institute is a nonprofit think tank funded wholly by grants from governments, foundations, and other nonprofit organizations. None of its funding comes from corporations. Their mission is to find, quote, sustainable solutions for ending hunger and poverty. They have commissioned a couple studies that find BT cotton is not a significant driver of Indian farmer suicides. 
People looking to exploit those suicides in the anti-biotechnology movement have attempted to link the IFPRI in some way to biotech corporations. I've gone so far as to read about the educational and professional backgrounds of the three researchers involved in these studies. Neither the institute itself nor the researchers have any connection to biotech organizations that I can find. Further, the institute has a neutral stance on biotech and sometimes takes positions at odds with the goals of major biotech companies. It seems their mission is, as stated, sustainable solutions for ending hunger and poverty. It's a worthy goal, and attempts to throw them under the Monsanto bus have mostly failed as far as I can see. Here's the first IFPRI paper on BT cotton and farmer suicides that was published in 2008. See the links. The same researchers revisited the subject again in 2011 from their abstract. BT cotton is accused of providing, being responsible for an increase of farmer suicides in India. But in this article, we provide a comprehensive review of evidence on BT cotton and farmer suicides. Available data shows no evidence of a resurgence of farmer suicides. Moreover, BT cotton technology has been very effective overall in India. Nevertheless, in specific districts and years, BT cotton may have indirectly contributed to farmer indebtedness, leading to suicides. But its failure was mainly the result of the context or environment in which it was planted. I went a little further in my research. This film yield shows farmers in the state of Vidarbha. This is what Wikipedia's entry for Vidarbha says of the matter of farmer suicides. There have been more than 200,000 farmers who committed suicide in the last decade, out of which more than 70% of farmers belong in the 11 districts of the Vidarbha region. This is mainly because of the infertility of the land, lack of ample amount of water resources, lack of new technologies, and due to negligence of the state government towards the farmer's need. I looked at the IFPRI paper for references to Vidarbha. Can you believe this footnote? Quote, some reports even mention rates of 50 to 60% from moneylenders in the district. First, in an environment as impoverished as that one, such high rates of interest may be a necessity when many of the people borrowing cannot repay. There's a terrible catch-22 at work here, where the high interest rate makes farming an even riskier gamble than it already is. And because so many fail to make enough to pay back their expensive loans, they kill themselves, and interest rates remain high, guaranteeing a continued state of great misery and human suffering. Here again, crop insurance would go such a long way toward alleviating the problem, whatever they farm. Vandana Shiva used to be a great hero of mine, but for distorting the truth of the myriad causes behind the Indian farmer suicides in order to damn BT cotton, she fell very far in my esteem. She doesn't have to worry about crop failures. Her speaking fees are listed as $40,000 per appearance. That's good work if you can get it. Maybe more Indian farmers can go on a U.S. speaking tour and share some of that wealth. 